Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. The video camera is running. What you're about to see in the next 60 minutes is real. Real cops, real crooks, real cases. Everything from state-of-the-art training to terrifying shootouts. The most reckless criminals, the most bizarre and unusual crimes ever captured on tape. From high-speed chases to robbery in progress. From impossible rescues to insane crimes of passion. We've gathered this amazing video from departments all over the world. Much of it has never been seen outside the law enforcement community. What you see may shock you, frighten you, anger you. But we bring it to you for one reason. Because knowledge is power. A power that could save your life. I'm Sheriff John Bunnell. We've traveled around the world to give you a hard-hitting look of police in action. It's not always pretty, but it's always real. So get ready. The action starts right here, right now. When a routine traffic stop suddenly explodes into a high-speed chase, it's obvious the driver is scared of more than just a speeding ticket. Manning, South Carolina. Turn your cameras on, boys. Two dash cams capture a high-speed chase. Chief Randy Garrett and Officer Pete Surratt race to join the pursuit. 112-103, in the pursuit, behind the suspect. Captain Alpha Lou Exxon headed towards something. Notify something. They're about to discover why this speeder isn't stopping. Don't crowd him too much, Pete. A suspicious bag flies out the window. Go back and get that bag. Bag's got dope in it. But undercover officers in these high-performance Mustangs are about to discover something even worse. Running the plate, officers discover the driver is a convicted child molester. Then Chief Garrett makes a more ominous observation. Another passenger. To them, this second suspect could be waiting to open fire. He's reaching, Gene. He's reaching. What they don't know is the other passenger isn't a suspect. He's the driver's nephew, a four-year-old boy. Right now, he's being held down by his uncle. Police sense a window of opportunity. They make a plan. We get on this straight stretch. Let's try and get by him again, but be careful. But the suspect has a plan of his own. Back off this way, all coming traffic to see As the officer tries to position himself for a strategic maneuver, Watch the curve, Pete. Watch the curve. The suspect suddenly cuts in front of a family minivan. All right, Pete, he's trying to call somebody to have a head on police. And swerves toward another van, scattering terrified motorists. He is coming around the curve on the wrong side of the road. Highway patrol units jockey for position. By the notify of this subject is trying to pit people head on, so their units are proceeding this way to use caution. But as Chief Garrett and Officer Surrett close in, a stalled big rig forces them all to break off, seconds before catastrophe. No one is safe from this high-speed kamikaze. School bus, school bus. A loaded school bus threatens to become a fiery wreck. But he veers off at the last second, rocketing away. He bulldozes over an intersection median. Then through a stunned construction crew. Right, we coming to you, boys. We're coming hard, coming down. But when he tries ramming officers off the road, enough is enough. Wait till we get on this straight straight, then we'll deal with it. In a split second, Chief Garrett makes his move. <laughs> the suspect loses control, tumbling end over end. The driver's four-year-old nephew is ejected from the cartwheeling wreck. 
Miraculously, the toddler suffers only a broken arm. The man still refuses to surrender. It takes a half a dozen officers to subdue him. For an officer, there's no such thing as a routine traffic stop. Even the smallest offense can suddenly become a life or death duel if the suspect is desperate enough. This man threatened dozens of innocent lives in order to escape. He was even willing to sacrifice his nephew. In the end, his high-speed treachery only earned him a speedy trial and a 10-year prison sentence. The freeway is no place for a pedestrian. A person would either have to be a fool or a madman or a criminal to set foot on a busy highway. Toronto, Canada. On this freeway, a homeless man is spotted wandering aimlessly. He finds a hubcap and wears it like a hat. Then the man stretches out as if he's preparing for a sporting event. Ontario Central, please send assistance. It takes two strong officers to bring him in for psychiatric evaluation. This man is actually trying to cross 16 lanes of traffic. He wants cars to stop, but the drivers can't see him until the last moment. I look forward to get front across the 11 Hill. He edges through traffic and makes amazing progress across four lanes without being hit. Police try desperately to reach him, but they are delayed by the overwhelming number of vehicles. Amazingly, he makes it across all 16 lanes. What happens next is a bizarre twist of fate. The man is hit by a driver swerving to avoid a rear-end collision. Seemingly uninjured, the man gets up almost immediately. Even more astonishing, he shakes the hand of the driver who hit him. Houston, Texas, police set up a sting to catch a gang of car thieves. We have several felony warrants on this group. But as the bus goes down, one of them breaks free. He tries to escape by running across a busy highway. He leaps the concrete divider and turns his head to glance at a plainclothes officer trying to stop him. He never sees the taxi cab in the fast lane. The damage to the vehicle says it all. No one could have survived such an impact. Foot traffic is not allowed on the freeway for good reason. A human body is no match for tons of speeding metal, let alone six lanes of it. It's no place for a pedestrian to gamble with fate. Baldwin County, Alabama. An officer follows a team of robbery suspects. Nine one nine zero. It's black older model Oldsmobile. This driver and his girlfriend don't steal cars or rob banks. They shoplift cigarettes. We stop in this vehicle here this night. The officer is astounded when the suspects turn around. Pull over! Pull over! And then run like hardcore criminals. Eight twenty three Baldwin Central. Then US They even toss the evidence out the window as if it were a kilo of heroin. All in Central, they just threw the cigarettes out here on 49. They're traveling about 50 miles an hour in and out of traffic. The officer calls for backup, but before the highway patrol can respond. His windshield is sprayed with debris. Chunks of rubber fly everywhere as the tire disintegrates. Eventually, they pull over, but the driver refuses to cooperate. Put your hands on the car! Put your hands on the car! Backup arrives. Face to face with a 9 millimeter automatic, the suspect finally stops arguing. On your knees! On your knees, sir! 
The girlfriend pretends to be an innocent victim. I tried to tell him to stop. But another patrolman knows they work as a team. That's the same ones we've been having trouble with all over Baldwin County. Now, Heather, cigarette thieves from hell. Pull over! What started as a petty shoplifting over. charge became reckless driving and evading an officer. This Bonnie and Clyde should have kicked the habit before ever setting foot in Baldwin County. Cigarette thieves from here. Coming up. Drive the gun! On chases and shootouts. Dedicated cops. In the eye of the storm. A furious chase He's running. thunders down back road. Officers in Get danger. Down. down! Down! Strike with lightning speed. And suicidal outlaws. He's got a gun. He's got a gun. Unleash a hailstorm of destruction. There's trouble in the air. Come in. Come in. Come in. Next. Police officers face it all. Oh. Teens with a need for speed. Madmen with a death wish. Drunks with a thirst for destruction. The stakes are high. Move away from it! And these guys are playing for keeps. Warren, right, South Carolina. Officer John Stankus stops a car for having a broken headlight. How you doing? Your driver's license, please. The driver has no license and the officer can smell liquor on his breath. He's headed toward the big eye. He's gonna run the red light, he's gonna run it. He charges through every intersection as if other cars didn't exist. He's running. Oh man, we need some help. Sci-Fi 221 just passed Thompson. I need some help, folks. Cutting into the median, the suspect kicks up so much dirt the Stankus can hardly see. He's almost forced into a head-on collision. The suspect speeds recklessly past other drivers. Hang back, man. Stankus watches in frustration as the suspect gains a considerable lead. I had to slam it on. I had one in front of him move over. The officer catches up with him as rain begins to fall. It's raining hard, Mike. Raining hard. The suspect doubles back like a jackrabbit, hoping to throw Stankus off his trail. The officer knows these roads too well. He's turned back around. We're going back across the road. Back to two Dodging and weaving, the suspect makes a big mistake. We're going back across the road. Three go three go the bridge up ahead is out, and the suspect is racing straight for it. Close, 1,500 foot ahead. Is he going to be in for a surprise? But the suspect turns again. Virginia Circle, Virginia Circle. 10 forward, we'll let him find it out for himself. Moments later, the suspect runs out of time and highway. He's come to the end of the road and has nowhere to run. This chase is over. The driver is charged with drunk driving and eluding police. He's running. If you think you can run in South Carolina and kick dirt in the face of Officer John Stankus, you'll come to the end of the road one way or another. When the threat is real, law enforcement can call upon tremendous firepower. But the police will always look to see if there's a non-lethal way to end a standoff. Because believe me, no officer wants to take a human life. In Sao Paulo, Brazil, local police try to apprehend a wild man on the loose. Lurking in the shadows and carrying an axe handle, the man ignores the officers. There's no telling what the suspect will do, so the police are ready for action. Suddenly, the man starts running, only to stop seconds later, ready to fight. The officers have their guns drawn, but shooting is their last option. Staring down the barrels of several guns, the suspect shows no fear. He raises the heavy club, ready to strike. That's when the officers get creative, using a police car to back the man up. The suspect has no choice but to turn all of his attention to the oncoming car, and an officer on foot rushes in, taking him down. Brazilian police don't go easy on the man. 
They do things a little differently down there. Considering the lethal alternatives, they've shown a great amount of respect for human life. Albuquerque, New Mexico. Police respond to a domestic violence call. The officers order the man out of the house. But when the abusive husband appears, he has a weapon. It's a handheld crossbow. Using non-lethal bullets, the police open fire and the man goes down. But he's only stunned. Thanks to the use of special shotguns that fire weighted beanbags instead of hard lead. As a result, the man is knocked down, but not permanently hurt. He's even able to crawl back inside as the canine is released. Minutes later, the suspect surrenders peacefully. Put your hands in the air. In fact, he's even grateful to the officers. He actually extended his arm at the hospital and wanted to shake my hand and thank me for not killing him. Standoffs can turn deadly with one pull of a trigger, but police are working harder than ever to preserve lives and make sure these armed suspects live to stand trial. Santa Fe, New Mexico. Pursuit of a speeding drunk driver. He swerves wildly around other cars to keep the officer at bay, then rockets ahead at 100 miles per hour. A dangerous speed, especially when making a hasty exit. This drunk doesn't learn from his mistakes. Seconds later, he charges through a red light. The driver narrowly misses an oncoming vehicle as he skids into the opposite lane. Now things get even worse. The suspect tears down the winding two-lane road. Suddenly, he passes traffic on a blind curve, swerving away from an approaching car and sideswiping a vehicle in his own lane. Amazingly, the suspect stays well ahead of the officer. When he tries his next maneuver on a dirt road, he finally loses ground. Literally. The car skids up into a bank, flips over, then spins on its roof like a top. The suspect is lucky to survive this wild chase. Swerving. drunk driver tempted fate one time too many and turned his whole life upside down. Coming up. Hang on. On chases and shootouts. You help! Push comes to shove. Daredevil drivers push cars to the limit. An AWOL soldier pushes speed to the max. And savage kidnappers push danger to the brink. The lines are drawn. The gloves are off. The cops are pushing back. Next. back on fire, man. Criminals try it all. Drop the gun! They try to run. They try to push. They even try to fight. But the harder they try... Drop the gun! The harder they fall. <laughs> Richmond Hill, Georgia. The man on this speedy bike is a soldier stationed at a nearby base. He fears that if he's caught, his military career could be in serious jeopardy. The pursuit is fast and furious. The suspect drives like a lunatic, making it nearly impossible for police to keep up. But the officers and military police are one step ahead. They set up a roadblock across the highway. As the bike approaches the barricade, the suspect starts to pull to the side of the road, but the driver doesn't stop. He suddenly throttles up, and like evil Knievel, he blows right past the stunned officers. Okay, 
Once again, he's off and running, careening down the highway. He's hell on wheels. Request assistance. I don't know which way he's going to go. Then the biker suddenly switches gears and races toward the army base, where military police attempt to catch the daredevil driver. We just ran a roadblock over the school. I can't read the signs. We're going this fast. As police close in, the suspect tries to push the limits further, and even the best driver can push it too far. He takes the corner a little too fast and hits the pavement. Although he was arrested, this easy rider escaped hard time. In an ironic twist, superior officers gave the expert biker a more fitting punishment, teaching a class in motorcycle safety. Anyone can be taken hostage, children, adults, even cops. But when emotions run hot and danger runs high, hostage negotiators like Captain Bill Young keep the chaos under control. The difference between a police officer and a police officer who's a negotiator is that the success of this situation depends on your ability to not let your emotions get away from you. Your role in this situation is to be that calming influence. Tragedy strikes in Chicago. After an argument with his wife, this knife-wielding man holds his infant daughter hostage. The disturbed father is on the edge of doing the unthinkable. It's time for a negotiator. When you're dealing with somebody that's violent and dangerous, you've got to direct his thought processes to something more positive. The negotiator brings the man's wife to the scene. He responds with fury. Seeing the mother of his child only sends him into a rage. He begins cutting the clothes off the helpless child and throwing debris at the police. The officers have to get the wife out of there before her husband's frenzy turns deadly. The negotiator gives the order to back off. What we're trying to remove is the police versus the suspect situation. And by the time Don comes, the man is tired and calm enough to talk. The negotiator gains his trust, allowing the man to write his own version of how things happened. One of the things that the hostage negotiator is trying to do is establish a trust or some type of bond with that hostage taker. While officers get in position, the negotiator convinces the distraught father to release his innocent child. Finally, the man drops his weapon. But until he surrenders the child, officers must keep everyone back, including the mother. The man gives the child to an officer. Only then can the cops move in and arrest him. OK, suspect, code for, code for, suspect in custody. We got him. The baby is safe, and no one is hurt. It's a testament to the negotiator's skill and patience. Time is your friend. The longer that a negotiation takes, the more likely it's going to end in a peaceful solution. In Rhode Island, it's a hostage situation with a twist. The hostage is a cop. The police officer in the brown jacket was ambushed by an armed bank robber. Now he's looking down the barrel of his own gun. You've got to be extremely careful. You've got to be very dedicated. And you've got to be entirely focused on a situation when you're negotiating. It's nearly impossible for the officer to remain passive. But it's also the most important thing he can do. The fugitive bank robber maneuvers toward a car. For the negotiator, this is unacceptable. As a hostage negotiator, you can't allow the suspect to leave the scene with the hostage. The gunman refuses to talk. He's bent on driving away with the cop as his insurance. But he's made more than one mistake in judgment. If I was a hostage taker, I would much rather have an, an innocent young victim rather than a hardened police officer as my hostage. The suspect has now forced the cops to stop talking and start acting. And then it happens. A sniper sees a clear shot. After a storm of gunfire, there is finally silence. But in slow motion, it's clear what's happened. A police sharpshooter sees an opening and fires. It's the moment the officers are waiting for. They rush the car before the hostage taker can react. 
The captive officer takes a bullet in the hand, but he's able to get away. The wounded cop is rushed to the hospital. This deadly situation is finally over. If you get called to a situation where the suspect has killed or may kill again shortly, you've got to be prepared to go to a tactical solution very quickly. Some hostage takers will listen to reason. Others only understand force and fear. But hostage negotiators like Bill Young will see these situations through to the end, one way or another. Well, being a hostage negotiator is the most satisfying and rewarding work I've ever done in my 20-year career as a police officer. Next, Drop the gun. on chases and shootouts, this is where the danger starts. Put your hands on the car. The hardcore punks seek a deadly thrill. Where ordinary cops pursue extraordinary crooks. It's death defying. Got a gun, he's got a gun. Mind blowing, full throttle action. Next. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. Come on, come in. When the danger's real, when the stakes are high, when there's no turning back, that's when the law puts it all on the line. He's got a gun. Got a gun. Street racers think it's cool to turn roads into their own personal speedways. But for every driver who wins a street race, there are those who end up winning a trip to the hospital. In Brazil, illegal street races have reached a new level of danger. Young men try to outdo each other with high-speed maneuvers. They burn rubber, thrilling the crowds that form around these spontaneous road shows. But what they don't realize is that these moves can be dangerous and deadly, even for the most skilled expert drivers. On test tracks around the world, law enforcement agencies spend hours in special vehicles, learning to perfect extreme driving techniques. But even for these experts, disaster is only an engine rev away. Thanks to safety restraints, the driver is fine. But what if this kind of crash happened only inches away from helpless bystanders? Police rush to stop these races, but they're at a disadvantage because these amateur daredevils will always run off and start up again wherever they find a crowd. This mix of adrenaline, gasoline, and mob mentality is a recipe for destruction. One minute the crowd is cheering, the next they're diving for their lives. Standing in the path of the car, this spectator is lucky he didn't lose a leg. Not everyone is that lucky. Another day, another wild crowd cheering for the automotive acrobat. With every near miss, the young spectators feed off the danger. One man decides to join in. He opens the door and jumps into the black sedan. Hanging out the window, he shows off for the crowd. But the hot dogging goes too far. The driver pushes the car beyond its limits. The results are tragic. The passenger tumbles out as the car rolls. We can't show you everything, but the catastrophe is clear. Even the experts know that speed kills. But when teens high on adrenaline treat their cars like toys, lives can be lost with one turn of the wheel. Forest City, Arkansas. This is Officer Jackie Clark of the Arkansas State Police. Get your hands over your head. He works a notorious stretch of highway known to drug runners as the Midnight Express. If I don't see a hand, I'm gonna get scared, okay? I don't wanna get scared. Chasing down and busting smugglers has made Clark a living legend in these parts. Just outside Forest City, Clark stops his station wagon for speedy. Suddenly, the driver floors it. Clark gives chase as other troopers join the pursuit. He tries to get closer, but the suspect sends a clear warning. 
this out here. Desperate for a way out, the driver spots an exit. Clark barrels through the median to stay in pursuit. The suspect tries to double back, nearly smashing Clark head on. The suspect lunges towards another exit, then swerves back on the highway. But no matter what he tries, he can't shake Officer Clark. The driver has no choice but to call it quits. Catching a smuggler on the run requires high-speed skill. But knowing how to spot a drug runner requires a trained eye and years of experience. Clark and his partner, Joe Williams, have stopped this truck for tailgating. The two men inside claim to be on their way back from a fishing trip. But the troopers notice that their fishing and camping gear looks clean, unused. Something's not right. The troopers search the truck, but come up empty. Williams tries to open the tailgate. But it's a new truck, so he decides to take a closer look. He notices that the back plate has been loosened and replaced. The suspects step back, exchanging nervous look. Williams pries the plate back and looks inside. Whatever that white powder is, it's not factory issue. The troopers start to take the men into custody, but suddenly the driver panics. Stop! Stop! You gotta stop! Williams gives chase, while Clark handcuffs the passenger and pulls him into a field. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Now! Okay, okay. Now. okay. The driver wisely gives up. Yeah. Yeah. But the suspects are returned and taken into custody. Thanks to their attention to detail, these troopers made a big bust. They took two kilos of high-grade cocaine and two drug runners off the street. But even a living legend like Jackie Clark has days he'd rather forget. Usually a speeder like this would be facing a big fine, but not this time. for his generosity. Lock my keys in my car. The guys at the station will never let him live this down. But Officer Clark knows how to laugh at himself. Intuition, dedication, and determination. Officer Jackie Clark uses all three to keep the pressure on drug runners. So criminals beware. You'll have many more days like this than days like this. Lock my keys in my car. Drop the gun! You get that money out. Coming up. Block him in, block him in. On chases and shootouts. Put your hands on the car. The heat is on. This thing's gonna blow. As a drunk driver. You are a Parkway 88 driver, speak. Burns up the pavement. A blazing chase. Rockets down back roads. And outlaws packing heat. Hey, 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 1080, 1080, 1080. Ignite a standoff. He's got a gun, he's got a gun. Blistering pursuits. <laughs> Furious firefight. It's hot. Squad, squad. It's next. Hey, 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 1080, 1080, 1080. Put your hands on the car. This thing's gonna blow. Outdistanced on the highway. Outgunned on the street. He's got a gun, he's got a gun. Drop the gun! Out of time in a chase. Whenever crooks go out of control, cops go out on a limb. The South may appear to be quiet, but it has its own unique problems. Here in Camden County, Georgia, the police are trained to deal with every kind of crime and every type of criminal under the sun. And sometimes, it gets very dangerous. Come on, your hands up! Drop the gun! Do not move! We brought our crew to Georgia to see for ourselves. Block him in, block him in! What we found were some unusual crimes. Shoot me! Shoot me! And some unusual police work. Just north of the Florida border, Camden County sees heavy traffic from Interstate 95. There are thousands of visitors every year and some of those visitors bring trouble. 
Put your hands on the car. Don't put your hands on the car. Hands on the car. Hey. Sheriff's deputies train constantly, using real-life scenarios that push their skills to the limit. Hey, 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 did I, did I, did I? Because when the danger is real and things go wrong, go get him, Jason, go get him! Officers can die. Here, a Camden deputy pulls a driver over for speeding. It should be a routine traffic stop. Hey, Dutch, I need to see your driver's license, please. But a background check reveals the driver is an ex-convict, wanted for parole violation. On top of that, the car is stolen. Go ahead, Ken. Additional sheriff's deputies arrive on the scene. They quickly move into position. They stand ready as the suspect gets out of his car. At first, he seems to be cooperating. Let me see hands. But then... He's got a gun, he's got a gun! The deputies have no choice but to return fire. The gunfire stopped. Give me an ambulance down here! The police always try to avoid the use of lethal force. But when a suspect opens fire, officers do what's necessary to defend themselves. In Georgia, like everywhere else, theft and robbery can be a problem. But one of the things the police train for here is faster response time. And that can mean bad news for the crooks. In this pawn shop robbery, the crazed gunman thinks he's in total control of the situation. You get that money out. The gunman doesn't realize the clerks have tripped a silent alarm. By the time he leaves, Camden officers have already been alerted. All units, all units, please be advised. We have a 1090 in progress, TNC pawn shop. 1417, 1020. The robber gets only a few blocks before deputies track him down. Block him in, block him in. The suspect is like an animal, running on instinct. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! But the deputies aren't letting this wild man get away. Watch the guns! Get on her! Go! Flip him over! I got it! Watch I got the guns! It. Hands behind your back! He's going straight to prison. A smart move by store clerks and a quick response by Camden deputies have turned a dangerous crime into a textbook takedown. But some takedowns can't go perfectly. Not when the suspects themselves are bent on destruction. In another insane pursuit, a gang of teenage car thieves makes off with a stolen vehicle. Two of the suspects have outstanding warrants. Blue and color four tours. Blue four tours, occupied five times. Camden Deputy Larry Taylor stays on their bumper. He hopes the thieves will wise up. But these carjacking juveniles show no regard for human life. They push it past 100, narrowly missing other vehicles. The skilled deputy hugs the road and hits the accelerator. He's not letting them get away. The chase becomes a dogfight on the open highway. Weaving through lanes, riding the shoulder, they fly past traffic like it's standing still. A second deputy gets in front of them, hoping to slow the pursuit down. To regain the lead, the suspects pass a mobile home on the right, but the move forces them onto an exit ramp. Getting off of that file. Getting off of that file. Deputies now realize the only way to take these guys down is to take them out completely. Deputy Taylor waits for just the right moment. He performs the difficult maneuver with total precision. He knocks out the suspect vehicle, but the deputy maintains control. 1050, Cam. 1050, have any squad around today, Cam. Some of the suspects are ejected during the crash, but thanks to the soft grass, no one is seriously hurt. 
These Florida car thieves thought they could outrun the Camden deputies. Hang on. Now they know better. But they had to find out the hard way. Next. We got another person out there somewhere. On chases and shootouts. A drunken suspect leads police down the path of destruction. Next. When a person commits a crime, they risk going to jail. But when they commit a crime and choose to run, they're risking a fate a whole lot worse than prison. Yukon, Oklahoma. Police try to stop this man on suspicion of DUI. Speeding in excess of 90 miles an hour, the suspect weaves across the center line and skids into the shoulder. As the suspect approaches a busy area, more backup joins in. Some of the officers race ahead to block intersections. They need to keep innocent motorists away from the suspect's path. Even drivers who see this pursuit coming don't have time to get out of the way. Reaching open road, the suspect guns it to 130. Then he blows a tire. But he still shows no signs of stopping. Another driver pulls into the right lane, trying to avoid the chase. The suspect sideswipes him. The innocent motorist is not hurt, but the suspect loses control of his vehicle. A hubcap shoots from the wheel as the vehicle flies toward oncoming traffic. Pursuing officers are sprayed with debris. At 80 miles an hour, the suspect shoots across the median in two lanes of traffic. He crashes into the trees on the far side. The officers pull up to the accident site. We're at 66th about County Line Road by the Lake Overholster here. But the danger and insanity of this chase are far from over. The engine has caught fire. Double check here, fire rescue, Yeah, she just advised in round. An officer smashes the window. But the occupants have been thrown clear. 1257 headquarters, so far we've got one occupant. She's been ejected, she's on the bank here. Suddenly, the engine erupts into a ball of fire. This car is back on fire, man. Tell them to hurry up, this thing don't want to blow up on me. The officer's small extinguishers can hardly keep it in check. Dang, we gotta get her out of here, this thing's gonna blow. But firefighters arrive before the flames can reach the fuel tank. Arena says there are two people the, in the passenger car. is carried to safety, but the driver is still missing. He may be hiding or trying to escape on foot. We got another person out there somewhere. But how could he recover so quickly after such a horrible accident? I think he's in the river. Divers began searching the creek. The next afternoon, they found his body. This is a warning to anyone who sees the bright lights of the law behind them. No matter what you've done, pull over. If you've committed a crime, you may be punished. But if you run, you could lose everything. Block him in, block him in. On the, car. the impulse that just says run. The spark Drop the gun. that ignites the flame. This thing's gonna blow. The fuel that feeds the fire. You got a gun, you got a gun. And when it all goes wrong, it's up to police to make things right. Thank <laughs> you.